welcome. We, uh, we even have a friend from the Africa group here. Welcome. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for waiting, guys. Here's Andres. Let's bless this. Uh, thank you, Father God, for today. Thank you for what you're doing in our hearts. Thank you for what you've done at the cross, Lord Jesus. We surrender to you. Amen. Help Holy Spirit our hearts be uh, good soil to receive this word because it's a very, very important word for all of us, Lord. We thank you that you have made us in your image and likeness. We are a new creation. When we said yes to Jesus, we became a new creation in Christ. We died with Christ, resurrected with Christ. So everything else in our lives is just a byproduct of a lie of the flesh and dying. We need to die to self. So thank you, Jesus, for teaching us, for helping us. But you see the final product made perfect. So we, we want to please you, Lord. We want to seek you. We want to grow to that fullness we want to please you at at all costs lord we thank you jesus we love you we thank you for loving us first in jesus name amen 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 so sandy um it's all yours andres okay thank you flavia hello everyone thank you for for being here um thank you for being part of, of this group I hope you uh, enjoy this teaching and also that you can uh, search in your heart to see if there is something that we can surrender. I mean, I think always we, we, we have something to surrender, but this, this teaching is about the Leviathan spirit. Uh, it's a pride spirit and it's like the root of many other uh, spiritual bondages so um, I want to thank you and let me share my screen so we can start Give me a second. So, the Leviathan spirit. The, there are five references to this spirit uh, on the Bible. Uh, it's in, in Job, mostly, but we can also find it in, in some Psalms and also in the book of Isaiah. The their mention the the ways that this um, spirit is mentioned is like uh, too short. They don't talk much about it. But in Job forty one, we find the the biggest explanation of who this spirit is or what are its uh, characteristics. So um, it is described as a as a crocodile or, or a sea serpent it's also described as the dragon in the sea um, basically it's a spirit that hides and lurks from the depths um, it's a um, as Flavia was saying uh, right now that we all have like a little bit of, uh, or not maybe a lot of pride, but it's really difficult to um, to know that you are prideful uh, if you are not like humbling yourself through through Jesus. So um, th this is why it, it says that it lurks like from the depths. Maybe we are being uh, prideful and we don't know it because we think that we are being humble. So. This is one of uh, its characteristics that it hides from us, hides from, from the surface. So uh, we need to be like alert. Uh, this spirit infiltrates marriages, ministries, friendships, and on and on. It wants to destroy our, our relationships because it wants to uh, conquer it wants to be like uh, to have nothing above above us 
So it, it will be reflected in self worship. So we 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 must be always um, wise to take a look at our actions and what and the why of we are doing those actions. So okay, let me show you this. This is job forty one, the one that I was telling you that has uh, the biggest description of of Leviathan. And um, I, I would like. Uh, to someone to read this to us. I don't know if anyone is available to read. Can you please? Uh, you can unmute your your microphone or raise your hand. If if not, I can I can do it, but I can use some help. Yeah, I can read it. Andres, can, can, can can you see it or do you want me to? Yes, I can it see it. Can you draw out Leviathan with a hook? or snare his tongue with a line which you lower? Can you put a reed through his nose or pierce his jaw with a hook? Will he make many supplications to you? Will he speak softly to you? Will he make a covenant with you? Will you take him as a servant forever? Will you play with him as with a bird? Or will you leash him for your maidens? Will your companions make a banquet for him, of him? Will they apportion him among the merchants? Can you fill his skin with harpoons or his head with fishing spears? Lay your hand on him. Remember the battle. Never do it again. Indeed, any hope of overcoming him is false. Shall one not be overwhelmed at the sight of him? No one is so fierce that he would dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand against me? Who has preceded me that I should pay him? Everything under heaven is mine. I will not conceal his limbs, his mighty power, or his graceful proportions? Who can remove his outer coat? Who can approach him with a double bridle? Who can open the doors of his face with this terrible teeth all around? His rows of scales are like pride, are his pride, shut up tightly with a seal. One is so near another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another. They stick together and cannot be parted. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Can you please continue with this? His sneezing flash fought light and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lights. Sparks of fire shoot out. Smoke goes out of his nostrils and from a boiling pot, a burning rushes. His teeth kindle coals, and a flame goes out of his mouth. Strength dwells in his neck, and sorrow dances before him. The folds of his flesh are joined together. They are firmed on him and cannot be moved. His heart is as hard as stone, even as hard as the lower milestone. When he raises up himself, the mighty are afraid because of his crushings, they are beside themselves. Though the sword reaches him, it cannot avail nor does spear, dart, or javelin. He regards iron as straw and bronze as rotten wood. The arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones become like stubble to him. Darts are regarded as straw. He laughs at the threat of javelins. He undersides are like sharp potsherds. Mm. He spears points mark in his mind, in his mirror. He makes the deep boil like a pot. 
He makes the sea like a pot of ointment. He leaves a shining wake behind him. One would think the deep had white hair. On earth there is nothing like him, which is made without fear. He beholds every high thing. He is king over all the children of pride. Amen. Thank you very much, Nadia. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I don't know if you have read the book of Job. Um, yes. This is like the moment after after God answers Job. He he. So the the Job was like um, complaining in a way uh, to God because he was like um la like saying like I, I was righteous i did everything that was the will of god and like uh he was talking as if he, he had he hadn't um, like the consequence that he received wasn't fair or wasn't uh, what god must have allowed him to happen so that that's the moment when god answers job and uh, he says like were you there when i created uh, the mountains and like uh, like saying uh, what do you know about uh, my my ways or or about my will or about uh, the things that i want for for my creation and then god starts talking about the leviathan so this is like a sign that job was uh, talking with pride in 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 his actions or in his um, in the way that he was living and he was like self-righteous because God had had mistaken on uh, judging him in the way that everything happened to his life. So th this is why God like uh, is telling us through through this scripture that there is there is nothing that we can do uh, in front of of a pride. Um, the, 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 the pride is this. Leviathan, this this monster that cannot be um, taken out from the ocean. It cannot be pierced with with an arrow. Uh, it has fire in his breath, and uh, it, no, nothing. Uh, there's nothing like him, which is made without fear. So this this is a description of all the the things that a pride spirit can uh, can do or will do so we we understand that with this uh, scripture that leviathan is a king of pride and with with this comes boasting lies and curses in james 3 from 5 to 8 I will read it to you. It says, Likewise, the tongue is a small part of a body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what was a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of a body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and, it's, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, fully of deadly poison. And so this is like a reference to, to the same characteristics that we found in Job 41, uh, talking about the Leviathan. So... Uh, in in the boasting, we we find this is like a self praise, uh, 
disor disorderly and um, presumptuous, inflate, inflating with words and speaking with arrogance. And th this can be uh, manifested in, in our tongue. So maybe we think that someone prideful will be like, um, I don't know, doing something, doing this prideful actions with with his hand or or with his with his mind, but it manifests a lot uh, in in the tone. Um, one of the scenes of pride is curse and lies. It seeks to manipulate and twist the truth. Uh, arguing and contending are other manifestations of pride. Anger also is another manifestation of this spirit. So those easily given to fighting, anger, and confronting people are, are maybe controlled by, by the Viatin. So, um, from this, we understand that uh, the Leviathan is a king of pride. And as a reference, the breath represents the spirit. So these uh, evil spirits can manifest through the tongue. The pride in our hearts will manifest through our tongue. And Leviathan has a breath of fire. As we read in James, fire spreads and destroys. So. People controlled by Leviathan will cause much harm through their minds and mouths. Any place people with this spirit go, they will encounter problems because they need to be like uh, the number one. The, and they will challenge everything that doesn't let them be in that position. Um. These are another another characteristics of this spirit. Uh, it's the obstinacy. Uh, for example, you will find that you are, you are refusing to do any kind of change uh, as if you need to control the situations. Uh, not only talking about the uh, position uh, like your position in a in a group as if you are the leader or something like that but if life itself changes and you are like refusing to that change uh, that may be because you had control in the in the situation before so um that's one sign of pride also that we need to uh, let go and surrender our control so we can adapt to any kind of change that God wants in our lives. Rejection of truth. This is something that will make us uh, have problems with, with the world because it will make us believe in a different gospel or make us uh, perceive Jesus in a in a different way, which is not the truth. Uh, it will also uh, make us deny to the denial of repentance. We we won't repent. I I, I don't need to repent because I'm fine. For example, so uh, I do everything that God wants. So I don't need to repent about anything. And being in that position uh, makes us prideful and as we were talking before it can start like with a little uh, prideful thought but then it can then it will want to govern our minds and our hearts so uh, we must not let this spirit have uh, any part of us and in the end uh, anything that comes from this spirit is a defiance against God because uh, as we were talking, there is in, this spirit wants to to be like the there. It has nothing about itself. So uh, as a reference in Job 41, uh, 22, it says strength resides in its neck, 
this make goes before before it. And in Acts 7.51, we find this. You stiff naked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. So um, we find that Leviathan's strength is in its neck. A strong neck refers to being obstinate or being stubborn. Obstinacy and rebellion are two more manifestations of pride. And if God wants to change our lives, obstinacy will lead a person to reject the word of the Lord and resist change. Another characteristic of Leviathan is being inflexible and unmovable, uh, like like the this stiff neck. Imagine like someone so prideful that he is always looking like above everyone, and uh, that's that's an example of of a um, manifestation of this spirit, um, and that makes us be. Um, inflexible and unmovable so it will result in someone that refuses to to yield and well our our calling is to surrender our lives to to christ so this spirit is uh, against the 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 calling that we have um so another characteristic is a hardened heart. It prevents fullness. Like uh, uh, I don't know if that's the correct word in Spanish is plenitud. It's like uh, being complete or being um, uh, it's full of God and being like you don't need anything else in your life. You have everything you need. Uh, it hinders spiritual growth. Uh, it brings difficulty to pray, read, and understand the word. For example, in Job 41 24, it says about this hardened heart its chest is hard as rock, hard as a lower millstone. Um, so the, the effects of a hardened heart. Um, will make us like um, unable to receive and give love it will make us um, bitter it will make us bitter uh, we will have a, a bitter life and this uh, this will hinder any kind of relationship that we will have with people and and uh, firstly with God. Uh, an example of this uh, spirit in the Bible is with the Pharaoh, Pharaoh that uh, had Israel people uh, as slaves. He was also called the great dragon in Ezekiel. Uh, he hardened his heart and was destroyed in the Red Sea. So the, this shows us that someone that uh, has this level of pride um, is like uh, the only one that can uh, stop him is God himself. Uh, because uh, a person with this spirit uh, will dedicate his life to to be the king and to destroy anyone that opposes this. So as in as in Job that God said that he the Leviathan is nothing to him. He can play with Leviathan, but we can't. And that's why the only the only one that can uh, stop this spirit or someone with this spirit is God Himself. Um, Living without prayer is a great sign of pride. We might think that uh, we don't need, like we are, we are okay today. So I, I don't, I don't need. I'm okay today. Uh, I'm feeling fine. Everything in in my life is okay. So I don't need to pray. I don't need to um, have a time with 
with the Lord. And this is a sign that um, I'm being uh, fulfilled by myself or autosufficient. And this this may be something, it, it may seem something harmless, but this will grow. The, uh, it will start like, I don't need to pray today, and then I, I don't need to pray in one week, and then I don't need to pray for months and on and on, because this spirit will always try to um, have us for himself instead of us being uh, surrendered to God because in the end uh, the a prayer is a sign of humility it, it's a sign of us surrendering to to God that we need him in our lives so this spirit opposes directly to to this spiritual practice um if we feel we don't want to pray, it's a sign we should not ignore. Even if we don't feel like it, we must go to our place of prayer and open our hearts to God. Uh, this is one way that we will um, go against this pride spirit. And in the end, is humbling ourselves. Um, a hardened heart leads, leads us to not take the time to know our beloved, ignoring God. So um, this is like, I'm, I'm fine by myself. I don't need anyone else uh, because I have a hardened heart. And we, we have our beloved right uh, in front of us. And he wants to love us like, like, madly in love and, and like fully but uh, as we have this hardened heart we we cannot recognize the love of god in our lives so the, this position in my point of view i think it's very scary and and it's very lonely and it's dangerous to to open this door to this spirit if we experience anxiety for example uh, it may be a sign that we are not praying so we we can use this as a, as a sign to go back to what god wants to for us in our lives um this spirit will always leave a trail a trail um it, it doesn't want to be like uh uh, uh I, I don't know how to say it in english but it's like he this spirit wants to be known that he he was there and that's part of a pride i mean it wants to be recognized by its actions okay so uh, the the trail of pride will be always destruction it will be wounds, pain, broken marriages, relapse, shame, and destruction. And in Proverbs, we find this scripture that says, Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before haughty spirit before the fall. So this is very clear. Every everywhere that we find this trail, before there was pride. Um, so pride is so deep in a man that it is difficult to remove because it lives very deeply within us. Uh, pride leaves a trail of misery, broken lives, and destruction. Let us not walk in the pride in the path of pride. It will bring restlessness and anxiety to our lives, and of course, it will affect. Uh, our people that we love or that we care about because uh, it, it will make the life about ourselves instead of uh, giving our life for 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 everyone else so what can we do uh, against this spirit uh, as 
God was saying in Job 41 that mm, there's nothing we can do with uh, against this spirit. Uh, that's it. We're not matches for pride. So this is a, uh, a warning not to mess with this spirit, not to mess with with being prideful because it's a very strong and deeply rooted spirit. It is impossible to catch it. So the the first thing we, we must understand is that we cannot fight it. Uh, we need to we need to depend on God and live in humility and we need to humble ourselves. Uh, and that's the way the pride will be destroyed. But it's not because I am so humble that pride cannot touch me. Because even in thinking that I am super humble or, or I am the the most humble person in the world, uh, there may be some pride behind that. So the only way is to truly humble ourselves is... Uh, by surrendering to to God, so um, th this will be something like recognizing the the need of God in everything that we do. Then, I mean, we we cannot fight fight this, but as we humble ourselves in God, uh, we we permit the Spirit or the Holy Spirit to to cast this demon out of our lives and i don't know if that was clear but the only way to destroy leviathan is is god we cannot do it it's only god that does this uh, for example this 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 other characteristics Leviathan won't negotiate. Pleading is a form of prayer. It will not beg as it is obstinate. So we we need to to the, this these are I mean this teaching is about uh, a spirit, but we need to be aware of how this is working in in our flesh too i mean i'm not saying that we are all demonized by this spirit but this spirit is always lurking and it's always uh, searching for the moment to strike in our lives so uh, as we understand all the things all the characteristics of this spirit we we can recognize these characteristics in our lives so we we must also be uh, we, they, this is not for thinking like oh that person needs needs deliverance because he has a leviathan spirit uh, yes the, this teaching is for that but also that we look into our hearts and look in the mirror uh, through the word of god and and to be be um, truthful to our actions and and to be for, for us to be able to to surrender to god the, these things for example if if we there's a moment that we see that we we want that we say i won't negotiate i won't submit i won't serve i won't be tamed all, all these things uh we have to apply them to ourselves too. So just just remember to uh, be always alert that pride wants to take everything from us. And that's why we need to be super alert that we need to be humble. So just to finish this slide, it won't submit, it won't make a covenant or serve another, creating a, an obstacle to the covenant of Christ. It won't serve. With humility, we serve others. Pride right? desires everyone to submit to it. Uh, this is, for example, we need if we are serving in the church, we we need to do it uh, with the right heart, with a humble heart, because we might be 
serving because we need to or we want to have a position in the church and then we want to be a leader and then we have we will have people to recognize us and so that that we we need to to serve God I mean this spirit will allow allow us to serve in the church but maybe it will allow us to serve ourselves in the church so we must be aware it won't be tamed uh, pride is destructive it is not something you play with and as we were saying if we play with a little bit of pride uh, at the end of the day uh, it might be a, a big problem of pride so we must not give any chance to this spirit in our lives it is important to understand that Leviathan wants to dominate our lives and submit us to its will. Therefore, we must be attentive and pay attention to how the spirit of pride manifests in our lives. L let us not think that these are characteristics of a demo demon only, but let us analyze if these characteristics describe ourselves. If that is the case, let us not stand idly by but begin to die to our to our pride in our lives, always praying for a humble heart, meekness, patience, and self-control. Um, we shall not provoke it. Provoking means awakening or stirring it. Pride can make some arise against someone rise against the Lord. Uh, I'll do it again. Provoking means awakening or stirring it. Pride can make someone rise against the Lord. Pride is a self-exaltation. So uh, in Job 41, 10, it says, No one is fierce enough to rouse it. Who then is able to stand against me? Here, uh, the, the second part, the who, who then is able to stand against me is God saying, um, or, or this this question, the Lord is asking this question as if saying that if there is if there is no man that can defeat Leviathan, he definitely cannot stand against the Lord because he is the only one who can humble Leviathan. So I think this is like what God was saying to Job, like um. You, you don't even know what you're talking about. Uh, you can even um, do something about your own pride. And what do you think you can do against me? So the, this will, this spirit will make us uh, be against the Lord. Um, Leviathan cannot remain in the presence of God. God crushes pride. Okay. Um, this was the sin of Lucifer and the reason of his fall. So uh, this is very serious. It's not like uh, any any other spirit. This is a uh, one of the spirits that has uh, more power, and you will see in in the, in this slide. So uh, in Job forty one thirteen to sixteen. Uh, it says, who can strip off its outer coat? Who can penetrate its double coat of armor? Who dares open the doors of its mouth, ring it about with fearsome teeth? Its back has rows of shields tightly sealed together. Each is so close to the next that no air can pass between. So this spirit has an armor. Uh, it's being described with a with a really thick armor. The scales of Leviathan represent groups of demons that unite to protect it. This is a ruling spirit that has numerous demons under its control. So Leviathan has a very tough ar armor that doesn't allow the spirit of God to penetrate the lives of people it controls. To finish Leviathan, we must strip him of his armor so that he is exposed and we can wound him with the sword of the spirit. So this this, this says that no air 
it its back has rows of shields tightly sealed together, each so close to the next that no air can pass between. And uh, as we were seeing in, in before in the slides, uh, the spirit is represented by by breath or air. Uh, this is also saying that the 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 scales or the demons that this spirit controls are so tight that doesn't let the the flow of the Holy Spirit in 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 the person that it's controlling. So that's why we need to uh, to remove the armor so the the sword of the spirit can penetrate it. So um, this slide it's very important. Um, I don't know if uh, I, I can send you a screenshot of this because this is uh, some of the scales. I think there are more scales, but the, this is uh, very good for us to to make a reflection. Let me give me one second. Okay, so let me read them to you. Uh, we have arrogance, haughtiness, <laughs> arrogance again. So, sorry, I, I translated from Spanish, so I don't know. There are some words that I don't know. That's why it's twice arrogance. Self-exaltation, self-promotion, mockery, anger, contention, control, disdain, disobedience, destruction, dominion, hardness of heart, ego, egocentrism, selfishness, self-indulgence, lack of submission, pharisaism, sorcery, independence, inflexibility, intellectualism, intolerance, anger, boasting, curse, manipulation, lie, folly, unwillingness to admit wrongdoing, unwillingness to change, unwillingness to apologize, obstinacy, pride of knowledge, Orion, that as I understand it's like a, a spirit of, of knowledge, too. perfection, prejudice, prejudice, arrogance, rage, rebellion, rejection, resistance, rigidity, quarrel, pride, fear, vanity, and shame. And I think there are more. But um, this is for us to to analyze, for example, I in my in in my personal experience, I had a, a spirit of rejection, uh, but I thought that it was because uh, someone hurt my feelings uh, sometime, uh, so I. I let this spirit of rejection to be part of my life and I was like living in self-rejection and also rejecting people. But uh, I, I didn't know that behind that uh, rejection because I, I was feeling like a victim. Uh, it was this pride that make, made me think like, oh, my life, is so important that uh, as someone made me uh, mistreated me this way, and now I must protect myself from being hurt again by living in in rejection. And this rejection didn't come by itself. I was living also with independence. I was also living in arrogance. Uh, I was living in selfishness. Uh, I had this pride of knowledge. I was like looking for per perfectionism. Uh, I, I had a lot of them. <laughs> uh, maybe more I haven't like making all my, my reflection on this subject. But uh, in the end, uh, on my deliverance, 
I was also like in in addiction to 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 drugs, and God delivered me with through His Word and through worship, and like one one day I was in a in a, like worshiping God, and and the next day I didn't have any of these cravings for for the drugs, and I I it was like a miracle to me, but like many many months later i understood that god uh, what god delivered me from was not uh, from the addiction only but it was from from my pride that he was delivering me and that if if he hadn't delivered me from pride then uh, i will have uh, I will come back to to these addictions because uh, the problem wasn't like treated from the root. So the, this is why we need to be like um, humble, bit to recognize that we need him in everything that we do, in uh, every moment of our lives. That there's nothing if if we do something without him. Uh, we are we we are not capable uh, uh, capable of I mean maybe we are in in our own flesh but it won't be um, uh, I, I it won't be like the 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 fulfillment of our calling uh, or the motive of why we are alive so that that's why we need to recognize that. We need uh, the Lord in everything that we can, that, that we do. Um, so we must not underestimate the strength and power of Leviathan. Uh, it is useless to try to defeat and dominate pride with our own strength. Once we know our own inability, this will force us to humble ourselves and seek the help of the Lord. So um, let me read this to you. Leviathan uh, has a very tough, tough armor that doesn't allow the spirit of God to penetrate the lives. Oh, I read this already. Um, some people do not receive deliverance from the Leviathan because its kingdom is often protected by its scales. These other spirits give reasons to people to cling to pride. For example, this uh, rejection spirit in my life, that, that was like the reason I had to be prideful and to finding my own um, comfort in my life. And that made me seek, uh, for example, drugs uh, to, to be like, um, like to combat the anxiety, for example. So uh this this is why um these spirits protect the pride leviathan's strength can only be destroyed when we remove its protection leviathan is a spirit that rules over many religious groups that reject the baptize, baptism of the holy spirit and its gift gifts so as we can see this spirit will also infiltrate in in the church uh, I, I think the church will be one of the main objectives of this spirit. So this is not like condemning other denominations or other uh, like Catholicism, but this is just to see that they are struggling with a, with a bigger problem with, with this principality and that we need to uh, go through through deliverance for them to to be open to the move of God. Okay, so this this is the greatest battle of our lives. We need to depend on the Lord. Um, the, the greatest battle of our lives is is against uh, ourselves because uh, we give permission to to this spirit or 
the flesh to to have our lives so that's why we need to depend on the lord we are too weak to fight the enemy without god's help we must submit to the lord and humble ourselves before him to experience victory and in job 41 9 says any hope of subduing of subduing it is false the mere sight of it is overpowering and i don't know if you have met any prideful person but they have this look that scares that make you like oh, oh no this person uh, i won't fight with him because we we will reach nowhere and i mean if we if we try to fight uh, against pride uh, we will like fight be fighting fire with fire we will become prideful too so the only way is uh, with humility and that's it we we achieve our victory over leviathan by uh, through the humility of of jesus in jesus we we see the the example that we need to follow he gave his life um he he gave us all all that he was um, because of of love and intimacy with with god and that's what uh, we need to do too we need to be intimate with our father and to bring him everywhere we go so we experience this victory even if we feel like our hearts are being hardened or, or that we we feel this fire in our tongue to say something that can destroy someone someone's feelings or or even curse them so the only way is like uh, manifesting jesus in that moment and that's that's the way leviathan will be destroyed from our lives and it will deliver us from from this oppression so that's it i don't know if you have any questions or any comment Oh my goodness, yes, Andres, that teaching was so awesome this evening. You really ministered to me, ministered mm. to me so much. I thank you for the word of God. Mm. You know, this is so, or this teaching this evening is so ordained. I've learned so much. I, um, you know, humility, God is, you know, when you speak about it, you know, the humility brings victory. That's, the, you know, we can fight the Leviathan mm -hmm. through the spirit of being humble, you know, and um, I thank God. And that is one of the things um, I will ask, continue to ask God to give me a humble spirit. Give me a spirit of humility. So, and worship. And um, I just thank you for the word this evening. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing, Naya. Yes. I just want to um, continue on um, Sister Nadia said, you know, in terms of um, some spirit of uh, um, Leviathan. I'm so glad that, you know, the churches are teaching about it now and you know even tonight the teaching that I got I had to face a lot of leviathan especially the beginning of this year in you know the lives of others and maybe in, in my life as well and you know even today this is a word in due season you know because even today I came home from work and um, I was angry about something in terms of um, mm. someone who, who um, I had asked them a question and they made a little bacchanal me and um, I 
I, you know, I was like in the bathroom and I was like telling God, you know, God, I don't deserve this. You know, I want to, I, I want to confront the person about confront. And I felt like if Holy Spirit was saying, um, like not to um, confront them. I was like, God, you know, you know, I didn't deserve this. I just asked a simple question and, you know, it, made, it came out to be this back and all, right? And, you know, I felt like if God was saying, Keisha, you know, don't, don't, um, don't address the situation. And I felt like God was saying, you know, consider me, um, how much rejection I went to, especially in Isaiah 53, you know, that he was wounded and all the things that he went through. And um, he was saying, you know, don't leave it in my hands, just, you know, leave it in my hands and allow me to work and show love and, you know, pray and stuff. And I really mm -hmm. thank God, you know for this word tonight that confirmed, you know, that, and, you know, we need to get more equipped about the spirit of love, right? And whether it be in other person's life and even in my, if it's in my life too, to be, I think, you know, be a little more equipped because I started to do a little study. So you know, we met face to face with the right? and in terms of a friendship and it was so much and um, I had to still, the ruins of it, but at the end of the day, I know God will give um, me the victory and give each and every one of us here, you know, to God for this word and was executed. And you know, may God continue to bless you and your family, Brother Andre. Amen. Same to you, Keisha. Thank you very much. And yes, we must remember that. Uh, our fight is against these spirits and that people are suffering bondage uh, from this spirit like we 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 our power but we, we must look at them with compassion because in the end they are suffering a life in chains they are like um but like we once were before knowing Christ. So we must love your enemy. I know it's hard, but when you understand that, that the, the problem is this spirit behind the person, then uh, it's easier. It gets easier because you see uh, with, with the lens of, of Jesus, like uh, with compassion and loving, people. So thank you for sharing, Kishi. Um, I don't know if anyone else wants to comment or if we end the session. Okay. I think we, we can end the session. So um, I will I will pray. Father, we thank you for, for this time together to get to know you uh, a little bit more and get to know the will of your word in our lives. Thank you for being so clear on, on how, must, how we must be um, in our lives, how we must surrender everything to you, even if, if we are like... Um, like used to to attitudes or to uh, our our thoughts that are not like renewed completely thank you for giving us light and understanding on on this subject and for letting us know uh, more that our heart must belong to you completely and that there may be some things that we still need to surrender. And even though they may seem harmless or uh, they may seem like no, no one is hurt by them, uh, we must not give them space in our life because they they might grow. And the only, the only thing that we want to grow in, in our spirit and in our hearts is, is your love. Is your love for, for, for our brothers and sisters, and to 
bring your kingdom everywhere we go and we thank you for for bringing this to to this hub to um, letting us to these leaders that always are caring for us and are are preoccupied for our well-being thank you for all the wonderful things that you are doing in the world right now and i want you to to please help us to um, to be to be light and to be always looking at, at the things that we can improve that we can still surrender to you so you can shine uh, through us that you can that we can reflect your love that we can reflect how you care for for the heart of people and how you want to deliver every every person and to bring salvation to everyone thank you father and any now i talk to any leviathan spirit or any other demon that comes that protects the pride that you you need to go now in the name of jesus out you need to go out now every spirit that is hindering our relationship with god you need to go now in the name of jesus everything that is bringing anger that is bringing the self-righteousness they, they have to go now in the name of jesus everything go out so in the name of jesus we pray and uh, we love you lord please um, protect us and protect our heart and we are hungry for more please give us more of your word we love you amen 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 hallelujah amen amen, amen. Okay. thank you so much andres thank you i appreciate it i'm just gonna pray one more time I keep feeling my ears. I don't know if somebody has either ringing or grinding teeth in their sleep. Uh, but a lot of times the ear has to do with Leviathan or the rebellion spirit, which is like the same as the spirit of witchcraft, which comes from the flesh and its carnality and all that. So I just want to, Father God, take authority right now. Mm -hmm. And we, we'll build on the, on the words of the teaching, Lord. I thank you for convicting our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us, showing us that only the Lord can deal with Leviathan. But if we are one with Christ, we'll, we'll hear the voice of the Father and we'll surrender more and more. So every scale of Leviathan is taken out. Every trait of Leviathan is taken out. Every head of Leviathan. There's actually a version of the Bible, I forget... <sighs> But he actually talks about seven heads of Leviathan. It's, I think it's in the King James. And then the other versions, it doesn't say that. Which is really kind of funny because of some of these dragons you see in the Oriental stuff and some of the different uh, Buddhas. And I was just in Thailand. They have this. It's like seven heads. All these, you know, self-righteous religions. And they, have, they worship this thing. It's crazy. The Lord is not like, you know, the word was written two, three thousand years ago, four thousand years ago. And these people now creating these idols. Why? Because some people see in the spirit, they're picking up in the spirit something. They just don't know that it's demonic. They think it's a God. It's a false God. And it turns into idolatry. So, Lord, we repent for all idolatry, even ancestral, anything the bloodline linked to idolatry and rebellion, Lord. Forgive us, forgive our ancestors. As far back as Adam and Eve, Lord, this curse is broken. The curse of rebellion is broken. We give you glory, Jesus. I, I, I ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you would reveal to everyone deep, deep roots of rebellion, idolatry, and pride. So we truly will come to you with a humble heart, willing to heal the things that we have made uh, a wall to protect out of pride so people would not see what we're going through and that you would just go deep and reveal to us so we can actually come to you and, and surrender, nail to the cross. So Lord, I just pray today that many hearts will be softened and every spirit of Leviathan, pride, hardiness, rebellion, and even fear 
because the fear of being rejected, it's a protection method of that kind of spirit. So we have to keep this facade of being really cool, really good, perfect, perfect, and stuff. So none of us are. Only Jesus was perfect. We thank you, Jesus. You are very, very, very loving. We thank you for the blood. I worship you, Lord. We all worship you. We give you all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you guys. Thanks for coming. I'll make the link recording in a day or two. I'll post it. Thank Amen. you. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Bless you. Bless Good you. Good night. God bless you. Ciao.